this video we're going to take a look at the new uh, particle deformation. Uh, the deformation is defined on the particle group under the shape collision operator section. There's a subsection called deformation. And we're going to take a look at what each one of these does. We'll go ahead and create a simple system here. We're going to borne some particles off of this green plane and have them fly out and hit these other uh, objects. We're going to turn those into particles and then we're going to see what happens during that deformation and see the effects of the settings. So we'll go ahead and set up Let's go ahead and make a matter waves here, and we'll use a size shape for the matter waves. And we'll go ahead and set those to be cubes, uh, fairly large, with some variation there. Uh, we've got to tell matter waves who we're going to born off of, and we're probably going to have to turn them around so they move a different direction. Actually, we'll use a, a velocity to just control their velocity right away. We'll go ahead and set that to be 50 or 50% variation and some variation angle and let's go ahead and see what we have okay we don't want them to go up we want them to go out we're going to lower the rate particles per second let's go ahead and just set that to, to 10 and let's also go ahead and give them some spin at birth Oops. Spin time of say two with 90% variation. Okay, so we've got a simple born rule defined. Let's go ahead and create our collision rule. Actually, before we do collision, let's come back into born and we're going to use an object particle and we have to turn all these other objects out here, this whole selection set into particles. That's actually defined as a selection set called targets. Let's actually go ahead and create a couple groups so we can keep track of all this. We're going to use a targets group for these guys. Let's go ahead with object particle, we'll say pick object, and then we'll use the selection sets. We'll pick those. It adds all of them in there. We'll go ahead and just select one and then we're going to say changes affect all so it updates all these objects to be the same as whatever we set now. We're going to go ahead and tell that to be in the targets group. We want to track object particle even though they're not moving. Uh, you could leave it as none. That's fine too. Um, instant shape and we don't need to use subtree. There's no uh, child objects on those. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn that off. Let's go back to matter waves and we're going to set him to be this other group. We're going to call him we'll call these uh, projectiles. Let's actually make another group under all. Just for good organization we're going to call this collision. And we're going to put both target and projectiles under collision. Let's go ahead and make the targets a certain color. It's kind of a reddish color and the projectiles uh, we'll make them Oh, let's make them kind of a green color. And we'll also come into the object particle and change the effect all and we'll hide those. Just get them out of the way. And we don't really need to see this emitter, so we're going to hide him. When we come back and start scrubbing, we can see that we've got those particles being born. Now let's reduce the velocity angle variation a little bit. So those green particles go flying out there. Uh, we're going to have to make them live a little bit longer so they get past there. Let's go ahead and adjust their lifespan. Okay, and let's go ahead and in our next rule, collision, we're going to set up the collision. Dynamics, shape collision. We want shape collision to happen between, um, we can define it to happen between one group. We're going to use the collision group so that it calculates collisions between these two groups. Go ahead and select this. We want the collision group. Um, deflector, right now we want none. Uh, there, are, there are different ways we could set this up. We could have it calculate collisions uh, on the targets and use the uh, projectiles as deflectors, but we're not going to use that. do that just yet. Go ahead and set this back to collision. Um, let's go ahead and uh, we can skip sizes, mass, it's not really needed. And the rest of these settings we don't really need right now. Um, let's come back up and we do need to say that we want the targets which are these red ones out here. We do not want them to move uh, during this exercise here. We just want to see their deformation. Now right now the deformation we're going to leave these settings set at the default. Let's go ahead and scrub back here and we'll go ahead and see what happens just as the these green particles come flying out. And we can see them bouncing off 
Of course, there's no gravity in our scene or anything. We're just going to want to use this as an exercise to see what happens during the deformation. Let's go ahead and select that targets group. It's Remember, these are the neutrons ones out here. We're going to go ahead and say that their maximum depth of deformation um, should be a certain number. Before we do that, we're going to create a sphere out here and just kind of use this as a size marker so we know what what is the 10 units radius of 10 units. So this is actually 20 units through the whole diameter. Um, we'll go ahead and set the target's particle group deformation. We won't, we'll say their maximum depth. Um, eh, for now let's just do half of this, so a depth of 10. So remember this blue sphere here has a radius of 10, so this whole diameter is 20. So the maximum depth is going to be 10 for these particles out here. It means that their surface can be dented in a maximum depth of 10 units in world space. Now the radius of that effect is different. The radius is going to affect, okay, if there's a collision point here at this point, um, how far away do we want to spread out that, that deformation effect? Uh, for now, we'll just go ahead and do 10 as well. And impulse, impulse threshold is going to determine uh, how strong something has to hit these objects in order to dent them. We'll leave that at zero so we just automatically get denting. And you know something else we'll do. We'll just do a quick modification. Let's uh, select this. We're going to unhide these guys, and we're going to apply some materials onto our objects so that we can uh, see them a little better. I'm going to go ahead and select that, and we'll go ahead and drop that on there. We'll go ahead and create a material for the projectiles, project, projectiles, and we'll name that, make that kind of a bluish color. We don't want them to be too apparent, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Then what we'll do is, on standard shape, we'll just drop that material in there. Okay. And this, remember, was our size marker. Um, we'll go ahead and just leave him there I guess. We'll come back, we'll turn on TP, we will hide our source objects and now we can see these guys flying in here.